Hello viewers, today we are going to discuss Laravel's service provider. From my experience, I have seen that many new developers are afraid of service providers to some extent. So you can consider it as an intermediate topic, but I think I can explain it in a way that even a beginner can understand. So let's get started. Before diving into service provider at first, let's see when we make a request to our Laravel application how that request get processed. When we start learning Laravel, we consider our root files like web.php is the entry point of our application, which makes sense as we register our URI and the controller that will handle the request is defined here. But this is not entirely correct. To be absolute correct, the entry point of our Laravel application and even most of the PHP application is the index.php file of that application. And where is the entry point index.php file in Laravel application? It is inside public directory. As you can see, there is an index.php file. So whenever we make any request to our Laravel application, what it does is it execute this index.php file first and then it will follow all other calls from this index.php file. So just as a proof what I have just said, for example, if we just write our DD, the dump and die function here, and let's say I'm saying here and then try to run our Laravel application, it will show that the dump and die, the DD function doesn't even exist. Why? Because we have just loaded the index.php file and even before doing anything, we are saying dump and die. So la this application don't even know what is dump and die because dump and die or DD is part of our Laravel application and this is not being even loaded. So let's just uh, move it down for example here and you will see that still the dump and die function is not loaded. So what if we move it under our vendor auto load? Now you can see this here that we have printed in our dump and die is being printed in our browser, which means this auto load is responsible to load the library that knows what is DD or dump and die. And you can also notice that this uh, welcome page that we have seen earlier is not loading yet. Why? Because we haven't processed the request yet. So if we move it down, for example, here, we can still see it is printing here. It is not printing what we want from the welcome page. Let's move it further down here. And now you can see it is loading the welcome page. So now I believe you can guess that this is the code block which is actually responsible to handle the request. Before handling the request, what are we doing? We are loading the libraries that we have installed using Composer. And after that, we are loading the file called bootstrap app.php. And inside app.php, we are loading all the files and classes that is required for bootstrapping our application. So before even handling the request, we need to load our framework at first and then we need to handle the request. The same thing happen for every request we make to our Laravel application. So now let's come to our service provider. The service provider classes are also being loaded before this request handling. Let's be confirmed about it. To be confirmed, what I will do is, as you can see in our web.php, we have a test URI and this is being handled by our test controller. And here I will dump something like method and then if I see it in the browser, as you can see, this method path is being printed. Now let's go to our service providers, which is inside our providers directory. And in this directory, we have app service provider. And if we just dump, same thing, the method here, then you will see that even before loading our test controller invoke, we are loading the register method of our app service provider. Now the question is, how Laravel even know that what is our app service provider? Actually, there is a file in our config, which is called app.php. And inside app.php, we have an array called providers. So here we have the list of all providers that Laravel is loading as its loading process or bootstrapping process. And as you can see, there is two lists separate by comments. And here we have all the service providers that is under illuminate namespace. And this is 
under application namespace. So you can consider it. You can consider this uh, illuminate namespace as a part of Laravel application. So we are not supposed to touch any of the service provider. But here, this is also being loaded by Laravel application, but this is exposed to us. For example, you can see all this provider that is listed here. We have them here also in this providers directory. So by default, Laravel provide these providers, but these are exposed to us so, we, so that we can also modify them. So now we know that this service providers is being loaded from this list. And we, we can see that we have few uh, providers here among them broadcast service provider is commented out because many of the application might not need it so if you need it we, you can just remove this comment now as you have seen that in app service provider we have a dump and we are printing the method and in this app service provider we can see there are two methods one is register and one is boot if we print the same thing in our boot method and we go to our browser then we can see that at first the register method is being loaded and the boot method is being loaded okay so now we know that in a service provider we have two method one is register method and another one is boot method register method is loaded first and then the boot method is loaded so what if we do the same thing in our auth service provider but interestingly we don't have any register method in our auth service provider is it so? If we look closely, we can see that this auth service provider is extending the auth service provider which is based on this illuminate namespace. So now if we go to our auth service provider, we can see that actually there is a register method which means this auth service provider also have a register method which is inside in its parent class. What if we just overwrite that register and then in this register we can print the same thing that we did and in this boot method we can print the same thing we did we can do the same thing in our event service provider we won't do it in broadcast service provider because it is commented out anyway so we can print it here as this one also has a register method in its parent class so we are overriding here and in the boot method we will print the same thing and let's say we do the same thing in our route service provider too so in the route service provider we have a boot method and we don't have the register method but it is in our uh, parent class so we also dump the method in the boot method too let's save all the file and go to our browser and reload the page here you go interesting we can see when we called our dump method in our app service provider register and app service provider boot so we thought that register method is called and then the boot method is called but when we did the same thing for all other service provider we can see that at first it actually calls all the register method of all the service providers and then it calls all the boot method of all the service providers and after loading all this only then we are loading our test controller invoke method so from here we can pretty clearly say that these are just simple classes with two methods which is called register and boot so at first all the register method is called and then the boot method is called when our laravel application is loaded and once all of them are loaded then it calls our controller as this service provider classes are just simple classes with these two methods there is nothing to be afraid of there is nothing complicated actually so now the question is what we are supposed to write in our service provider classes. Technically, you can actually write anything you want in all these classes before you load your controller, middleware, request or anything like that. That's why actually even though many beginners don't know anything about these service providers, they can still work with Laravel because what if they don't even touch these classes? They can still work with the controller, middleware, or the form request or anything like that they don't have to do anything in the service provider so as i have said that you can write anything but there are cases and conventions that what you should or you should not write in these service providers so these conventions are important because if you write just anything in your service provider then other team member or even the future you might suffer from it so let's know about those conventions by the way before knowing this convention let's know another thing for example here we can see that at first app service provider and then all service provider then even service provider is being called but 
from where this sequence is coming from it's actually pretty simple it's coming from our app.php file so in app.php we have listed these files in this sequence that's why it is being loaded in this sequence now if we just change the sequence and if we load the page you can see the route service provider is being called at first i want to keep it as it was but from here we can see that we can actually change the sequence so here comes the convention so we should not write anything in our boot method that a register method of another service provider is dependent on for example in auth service provider there is a register method and this register method is dependent on something that is written on our app service provider boot method so you might think that okay our app service provider is being called first but the boot method is not co being called first all the register method is being called first and the boot method so if you write something in your app service providers boot method and you think that the boot method is loaded and now uh, let's write something in our auth service providers register method which actually depends on our boot method then from this picture you can clearly say that it won't work because if the auth service provider register method depends on something that is in app service provider boot method then it won't work because this boot method is being loaded later right so it is the most important thing when you write something in your service provider so ideally you can register or bind any classes that you want to be loaded first in all your register class and then you can do any configuration or anything later in the boot methods so let's see an example uh, by the way i actually forgot to tell you something so when we call our test url you can see that all our service providers are being loaded it is not only the case for an http request it is same for a cli request for example if i go to the terminal and write something it will do the same thing if we call our laravel application from a command line interface as an example let's call php artisan inspire inspire is the command so we are calling this command and we can see the same thing so before executing the command and doing anything that is related to the command laravel will still load all the register and boot method of our service provider because as i have said loading all the service provider is part of the bootstrapping laravel application so whether you load it from the http or web interface or the command line interface it will always load the laravel application first otherwise this application don't even know that it is a laravel application so now let's get back to the example where we want to see when we should write something in our service provider let's think about this test controller so in this test controller we are dumping something uh, by the way i just want to remove uh, before doing this i will remove all the code that we have written in our uh, service providers now let's load our code again in our browser and we can see it is only calling the invoke function because we have removed all the dump that we had in our app service provider or service provider or any other providers now i have some classes in our services we have a service called sms and in this sms service we have real sms new sms and fake sms and all those sms classes actually implements the sms interface so uh, let's say we want to do something with the real sms for example if i just call new real sms and then send let's say phone number is plus 88 access access x and then test message and i will return something from here so if we run our code now we can see that message sent using real sms with this phone number and this is the message from my previous video you already know that writing a code like this will not be testable so what we can do is we can write sms interface sms and then here we can say sms and then if we run the code it will see that sms interface is not instantiable we already know it from our previous lecture but uh, how we can mitigate this we can simply say in the register method of our app service provider what we can say is we can say this app bind sms interface with real sms class and then if we run the code again we can see that now it is being executed without any error so my from my previous video you might already know why we do so but just to make sure we are in the same page 
if at some point we want to replace this real sms with let's say a new sms service we can do this just changing it from here and then if we load the page we can see that it is being sent using new sms which is coming from our new sms class you see and as we have seen that in our invoke method this invoke method is actually dependent on this sms interface as we are not writing new real sms or new fake sms instead we are injecting the sms interface here then laravel need to know how it will inject or resolve this dependency injection and we need to write somewhere in laravel application that this is how you should resolve the sms interface so we definitely need to do it somewhere when even this controller is being called and we know that the code that is called before this controller is being executed is actually the service providers so this is the place where we define all the dependencies of the classes for example when someone wants something from of sms interface we can see that if someone want sms interface we return new sms real sms or fake sms we do all this sort of defining the bindings here in the service provider now the question is can i write my own service provider yes you can but the question is when for example this is a very simple example where we have a service and this has one thing to be bind what if we have a big complicated service and we need to bind a lot of things and if we start binding all those things in the register method of our app service provider then it might get complicated so you might want to keep things separated we might want to keep all the bindings that is related to our sms service in an sms service provider i believe you understand when we should do it now the question is how you can do it so we can actually generate an app service provider from the terminal we can write something like php artisan make providers sms service provider and then if we come here we can see that this sms service provider is created now if we move this line to our sms service provider register method so we move the bindings now if we run the code we'll see that the sms interface is not instantiable again why even though we have bind it here but as you know all our service provider is being registered here in our app.php file but we have just introduced a new service provider which is not listed here so what we can do is we can just put our sms service provider here and if we reload the and if we reload the page again here you go we don't have any error anymore and all the dependencies are being loaded correctly so i think now we know what is service provider how these are being called when these are being called what we should write in them and how we can write our new service provider if you are a new developer in laravel i hope you don't afraid of service provider anymore these are just simple classes you can do whatever you want but we have some conventions and now you also know those conventions that i have explained in this video hope you like my explanation by the way in the next video i am going to explain how you can test your laravel classes using mockery so if you are interested about web development using laravel and php subscribe to this channel and stay tuned see you in the next one happy coding